Hello everybody, how are you today? Wow, guys, it is Wednesday. Can you imagine? I almost forgot that today was Wednesday. Somehow it just felt like, at one point I felt like I was racing the week, so I thought it was Thursday. And then somehow today, in the middle of the day, I thought it was Tuesday. So I'm not sure what's going on this week. It just um, feels a little bit like I'm out of work with whatever is happening. Um, but some days I really just felt this week like I was ahead, like it was Thursday. So much had happened in the week so far that it felt like I should be further along. And then there were other times that I felt like it was Tuesday. So, you know, but it happens. It's Wednesday. That's what the calendar says. That's what my schedule all day basically has been dictating to me that it is Wednesday. And so I know that wherever you are, uh, certainly if you're on the same calendar that I am on, it's Wednesday. Maybe you're way ahead and you've started a new day and it's Thursday. But wherever you are today on this wonderful day, the 12th day of August, I want to thank you for making this your place. Thank you for joining Thank you for being here. Thank you for your commitment always um, to share, to be here with me, to, to be in, good, um, in my company. And I love your company. Uh, there's nothing um, as lovely as knowing that you are here today, that you have joined today, and that you have a contribution to make, whether it be in just what you share in your greeting, whether it be in just you tagging someone, letting them know that we're on. Um, some of you have been on this journey with me for so long, for over two years, almost three years now, and what a journey it has been. Thank you. I want to thank you today. So I thank you for joining. Uh, we have been looking at the Jonah series, and that has been on. This is our fourth week. Thank you for being here with that series. Some of you have been catching up with that on YouTube. Thank you for that. Some of you have been subscribing. You've been listening to the Zoom sessions on Sunday. God bless you, all of you. Um, so many of you have connected in ways that, um, you know, and leaving comments in when Facebook messages, so many ways uh, people I have not met. Some of you are not even in my friendship, my friends group in Facebook, but you have been here and you have been blessed. You've shared that testimony and you've also blessed me with prayers and continued work words of blessings. Thank you. Thank you for being here today, all of you. I see you guys on every one of you. I see you, Bishop, Dr. Adamson. God bless you. Um, thanks for stopping in. Blessing, Sister Juliet. I see you. There are others behind the camera as well. My camera um, that I see, I'm not seeing you yet in terms of I see the numbers and but whoever you are if and even if this is your first time stopping in this is what we do here at Karen Althea Ministries live on Facebook 4 30 Eastern time on Wednesdays and we have moved the Monday sessions to a zoom session on Sundays and so join us on zoom as well at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, where we look at psychotherapeutic issues, things that um, are, you are able to use to help you in the process of being well, to get you back to that place of wellness, of self-care and, and health and good mental well-being. And that's what we talk about and get you involved in the care for your own self, your own body, your own mental faculties. And we also look at that from a scriptural perspective. So I want to invite you to join me with that as well on Sundays. This Sunday, actually, we'll be looking at grief and loss. So many people have lost so many loved ones um, throughout the period of covid Especially, I mean, you've lost loved ones before, but especially during this period where you might not have been able to connect with them or even visit. And, and not just by, by death, but loved ones also in some relationships because you've been distanced from people. We want to be looking at that this Sunday. So tell somebody, let them know we'll be on, on Zoom this Sunday for our grief and loss um, session. And so I look forward to seeing you there. So welcome everyone. Thank you for being here today. We are on the fourth part in the Jonah series. We've been looking at Jonah. 
we've looked at the guy we've looked at him as a man the mission we've looked at him at the mindset he had we've also looked at him in different ways in terms of the the um the pursuit that god had for him we looked at the problem that came out of that with the storm and how they almost lost their lives at sea the sailors and jonah themselves and we also looked at the fact that as they threw him overboard how you know last week we talked about god rescuing jonah jonah repented and and the restlessness of the sailors because they didn't want to throw him overboard and yes when they did how they saw the awesome reverence of God because the sea immediately calmed and how God rescued Jonah with with a big whale with the whale a big fish and um, the New Testament scriptures referred to that as as a whale so we want to say for sure there was a whale that swallowed Jonah and this week we we are still looking at the theme handpicked this is a fourth part in the series but today we want to look at handpicked to pray handpicked for prayer you're handpicked to pray about certain things in your life and sometimes that's where God pushes us that's where we get to when certain things hit us you have no escape you have no other way but to pray and that's what we saw in Jonah chapter 2 so today we're in chapter 2 um, verses 1 to 10 so I want to thank you guys for being here you're good company always good company so uh, in this chapter the entire chapter it is about Jonah's prayer now, I know that's different because we spent the last three weeks in chapter one alone, in three parts so far, looking at just chapter one. Here in chapter two, there are 10 verses and all the verses are concerned with the prayer that Jonah prayed. So thank you, guys. I see you, Nadine. Thank you for joining. Good to have you on. I know you have a busy schedule as well, and I bless God for you when you're here or even when you join later. God bless you. Thank you for being here. So, guys, um, in God's mercy... He sent the huge fish, he sent the whale to swallow Jonah and to rescue him, right? So as we look at prayer today, we want to ask then, so why did Jonah pray? Why did Jonah pray? Because here was a fish that already swallowed him and saved him. You see, what we see in chapter 2, and if you follow it, I always say to you, follow me. Go back in your scriptures, read the chapter, whether you read it from your app, your phone, your, your iPads, whatever electronic devices, or like myself, you probably like the good old um, Bible, the version, the literal hard copy. And maybe you, for you, it is that. It's being able to write and to edit and to jot notes. And that's me. And, and if you are like that, Good. Go in there, read that chapter, and hear what God says to you as he speaks to your spirit in your own personal quiet time with him. So yes, chapter 2 is about that prayer from Jonah's inner being. Why did Jonah pray? Jonah prayed because he found himself in deep trouble. The actual meaning for this word, the affliction, the, the, the King James Version says, is, is the actual meaning is that it was, it's affliction that is called tribulation and trouble. You're in deep waters. And that's where Jonah found himself. Now, I'm sure that Jonah is not the only one who's ever found himself in deep affliction and distress and problems. So many of us have gone to those places in our lives. He was out of rhythm with the will of God for his life. Yes, when we find ourselves out of sync with God's purpose, I want to say to you today, when you find yourself in that place, it is time to pray. This was deep tribulation for Jonah. He was thrown overboard. He had no company with him. He was alone in the belly of a fish. He was in deep trouble. He was despairing. He was also despondent. The guy was afflicted. He was in a place where he didn't expect to be. He took a ship in the opposite direction, making certain that he didn't get to Nineveh where God wanted him. Jonah did not expect this kind of end. He didn't expect the great wind that came upon the sea. He didn't expect God to pursue him with that storm. He didn't expect that there would have been a time he would have to fess up and own that the wind and the waves and the storms were because of him running from God. He didn't think it was going to go like that. And isn't that how it works out for us many times? When we fall out of sync, out of rhythm, out of alignment with the will of God for our lives, often we don't stop to think of what the results will be. We don't stop to think what that might look like 
when we are not in the will of God. Jonah didn't think about that. He paid his fear. It cost him to run away. And that cost, that expense was now costing him to be in a place where he didn't expect himself to be. And we all have different kinds of affliction, just like Jonah. We all experience different things in our lives, different tribulation, different troubles, different trials, different tempests at sea, all kinds of situation throw themselves at us. They look differently for everyone. But I want to tell you that the emotions are the same for many people. You feel sad. You feel distressed. You feel anxious. You feel afraid. Some people get into deep depression. You are surrounded by turmoil and fear. Our emotions will look the same even when our situations are different. Because what is trouble to you is trouble to you. What is tribulation and affliction for you, that's what it is for you. And it may be different for someone else with that same situation. But let me tell you, when people find themselves in tough, debilitating circumstances, their emotions are similar to the emotions that you and I feel. And that was where Jonah was headed. He was in despair. He felt hopeless. He was afflicted. He found himself in the belly of the fish. He described it as being in the midst of hell. And prayer became for him the only option in that moment. I don't know where you are at right now. I don't even know what situation you may be experiencing right now. But I know one thing for sure, that prayer is an amazing coping skill. Prayer is an option for you at whatever stage you are at, at whatever time or situation in your life. Prayer is always an option. It is an amazing place for you to be. And that's where Jonah was why he prayed. To God. He was in a place where he was desperate for God. I don't know if anybody listening to me today has ever been desperate for God, where you, God is your only hope. God is your only help. God is all. You're all in that moment. Nothing, sometimes not even the best of words from your good friend. Sometimes not even the best of text or messages from your pastor or a preacher. Sometimes not the best sermon can help you. You are desperate for God, crying out to God. I say to you, prayer is an option that is always available to you. And it is a coping skill that works. Yes, I see that, Michelle, prayer is heaven's currency. And it is, it, it's not just a currency that you can use to get through. It is so current that it is as applicable right now as it was 2,000 years ago. So I want to say to you that whatever is your situation, prayer, if you find yourself in affliction and tribulation and trouble and despair and despondency and hopelessness and helplessness even, prayer is a viable option for you today, my friends. Prayer is still available. Thank you for that, Stacy. You've been there, desperate for Almighty God, desperate for a word, desperate like Jacob. I will not leave here until you bless me. Desperate. That's where Jonah found himself. And many times when we are, when we find ourselves out of sync, out of alignment, out of rhythm with where God wants us or with what we thought God would have had us to be in. And you find yourself in some places where you recognize that this is out of the alignment of God's will concerning me. Um, let me tell you something. Prayer is available and it is always an option for you. And that's what Jonah found. Jonah, the same guy who was sleeping when the sailors were praying and crying and desperate for help. He was now the man that was praying. There's going to come a time in your life. I don't know if you've never been there. I promise you, you will get there. Some situations in your life when you're going to be desperate 
for God that you will have to cry out in prayer. And if you're not there yet, I want to tell you that you need to find yourself at that place because when you become desperate for God, when you cry out for God, he says, when you call unto me, I will hear you and I will answer you. And that's what Jonah was saying here. So where was Jonah? Jonah wasn't crying from a place that is cushy and comfortable and ideal. He wasn't in a nice um, couch. He wasn't sitting in a settee. He wasn't there laying in a nice plush bed with double layers and, and European style. Jonah was nowhere in comfort. The guy was among the slime and the germs and the intestines of a fish. He was in a place that was not in the least ideal. But I say that to say this to you my friends that prayer is not about being in a special place it is about being in a place where you are ready to meet with almighty God are you desperate enough for God are you desperate enough for God your place may not be cushy you may be in turmoil right now you may be in some toxic situations you may be in a place where you have not had peace or you long for peace your storms are raging whether it be in the purpose in your life whether it be in the relational issues in your life whether it be in your corporate work life it doesn't matter where you are you may be in some places that are far from being comfortable but those are the places that god wants you those are the places that you can cry out to him and he will still hear you Jonah said, I cried out from the belly of hell. Wow. From the belly of the grave, from the belly of a place that was considered, the Hebrew says, as the realm for dead people. When you find yourself in a place that is considered to be the realm for dead people, it is a place where there is no hope. Because when you are dead, there is no hope. There is no need to hope. You're already dead. Jonah found himself, my friends, in a place that he described as a dark abyss, a place of death and darkness, a place where there was no more drive to hope, a place where he had lost all hope or desire to wish for anything greater in life. Maybe you find yourself in that place today. Maybe you are alive with a breath in you, but your hope is dead. You have nothing left to wish for. Maybe you've given up on yourself. Maybe you've given up on every dream that God has ever planted in your spirit. Maybe you've given up on every purpose that he's ever placed in your life. I want to say that like Jonah, Jonah was at that dark place. He was in a desperate place. This was a time when you would have, it would have been easy to diagnose Jonah with depression. When you find yourself in dark, desperate, lonely places of aloneness. Not just loneliness, but aloneness. You are alone. Then it is the time and the place to cry out to Almighty God. And the text says that Jonah cried out to God even when he couldn't hope. He said he was in the innermost parts of turmoil. The actual location of prayer is not important. It doesn't matter where you are, if you're among the intestines, if you're among the dry bones, if you're among the skeletons and the things that seem to be dead in your life. It doesn't matter where you find yourself today. I want to encourage somebody to say, even if you're walking in the valley of the shadow of death, that the Lord shall be with you, that his presence will be with you. David said it. David said it in Psalm 139. He says, if I make my bed in hell, even there God will find me. He says, where can I hide? From your presence, O oh God. Where can I hide from your presence? For even if I end up in the uttermost part of the sea, in the turmoil, in the darkness, in the place destined only for dead people. Wow, even there, even there your presence will find me. Your hand will uphold me. What an assurance. So when you have a reason to pray, it doesn't matter where you are to pray. Wherever you find yourself today is the right place to pray. And I don't mean physical location, wherever emotionally you are, wherever 
wherever you are mentally, wherever you are psychologically, wherever your mental faculties are bringing you right now, I want to say to you that it is the place that God needs you and is ready to hear you. So cry out to him like Jonah. Even from the messy, in a gut of a whale, Jonah prayed and he said, and God heard. God will hear you. That's what he promised. He says, if you cry out to me, I will hear you. He says that in Jeremiah, we've gone through that. He says that in the Psalms. If you cry out to me, if you borrow, if you shout aloud, if you call out to me, I will hear you. To whom did Jonah pray? His entire chapter, the entire chapter two is about the prayer. The guy had a reason to pray from the belly of a fish. That wasn't any altar. Nobody wants an altar where you're among the intestines and the dead and the carcasses and the things that stink and smell. Nobody wants that altar, but that is the altar that God is ready to make some changes of some situations in your life. Prayer was the only option that Jonah had. And he knew he had the opportunity to pray, not just to anyone. He wasn't calling on the sailors. He wasn't calling on the God of the sailors. He knew he was calling on the almighty God. He called on not just anyone. Jonah prayed to the God of heaven and earth, to the creator God, the God of Israel's armies, the mighty God, the same God that he proved to the sailors. He said, I serve the true and living God. That was the God that Jonah decided to run to. When you find yourself in the depth of the belly of the whale, the intestines of the dead, the carcasses of the, 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 in the realm of the hopelessness that surround you, I want to say to you that there is a God. There is a God. There is a God that wherever you are, you can fall on your face. You can fall on your knees even from the gut of a fish, you can cry out to Almighty God and there is an assurance that he will hear you. He will hear you. He will hear you. Now imagine that Jonah was running from God. But when trouble and tribulation hit him, Jonah realized he had to now run to God. What a merciful God. What a merciful God. So many times, the minute you fail someone, the minute you betray someone, the minute a relationship is broken, those are people who write you off. You will never be able to rebuild some of those relationships. But what a merciful God. What a graciousness in our God that even though Jonah ran from him, even though Jonah was in this plight because he was running from God, the mercy of God extended to Jonah in such a way that Jonah knew in the graciousness of God that he could run to him, to him, the same person from whom he was running. When you come to God in prayer, he says a broken and a contrite heart, he will not despise. None that come to him will he in any wise cast away. He says he will leave the ninety and nine to go find the one that is lost. And maybe if that's what you feel today, maybe you feel lost from God. Maybe you've wandered far from the fold of Almighty God. I told you last week that softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. He's calling somebody back. He's calling somebody today a Jonah who ran away you've paid the price you've paid it from your pocket you've paid it in the relationships you've lost you've paid it in the cities you've left you've paid it in the country you might have left left you're running away from God but even in running away his mercy extended to Jonah that he sent a whale to catch him God will send someone and maybe if my words today are the, in, in, the, in the realm of that someone to catch somebody today who's falling. I want to say to you that the arms of Jesus will always be open to receive you. He says, today, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. 
So I want to say to you today, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter how far you feel you've run. Yeah, you might have been chasing and running for years. Moses ran for 40 years. But God still found him. God will pursue you. I told you that the second week in this series, God will pursue you. And if through these words today, if through this medium, God is pursuing you, his spirit is pursuing you, I want to say to you that like Jonah, you have the option. Cry out to God. Cry out to God from the belly of your mess, from the deep darkness, from the death, the darkness, the desperation, the depression, the sadness, the anger, the hate, the hostility, the anxiety, wherever you find yourself today. Cry out to God, for he will abundantly pardon. Jonah said, the waters come past me about in my inner soul. He said that the waves of life came crashing over me. He said that the weeds wrapped around his head. Listen, the weeds of life will wrap your head. They will tangle your mental faculties. They will confuse you. They will disturb you. They will cause you to lose your mind. And if that's where you are today, I say to you that if you cry out to God, if you cry out to Almighty God, He will hear you. God heard Jonah and He saved him. When Jonah thought that it was all over, God, He said, God pulled me up from the graves alive. Oh God, my God. That's what Jonah said. My God, I want to say to you, Ball out to God today. Yes, Michelle. Holla to God. Cry out to him. Ask him for his mercy today. And believe that God can rescue you. Just like Jonah. And pull you back. Pull you back to your best self. Your best years are still ahead of you. You have not lived your best life yet. It's not over as long as you have life in you. So I speak to the inner recesses of your being today. And I want to say to you, if you cry out to God, he will hear you and he will answer you and he will rescue you and he will pull you back from the dark abyss. He will pull you back from the depression. He will pull you back from the desperation. He will pull you back from the affliction. He will pull you back from your tribulation. He will pull you back from your trouble. Call out to him today from any place that you are in your life. And watch God turn your situation around. He will save you to the utmost he will save. He will save. He will bring you back. And so today, if you are at the reach of my voice, if you have a conviction in your heart, you know you've been running from God. Maybe you're running, is that, but I've been in church, I've been there on, you know you've been running even from the purpose of God over your life. You see, that was it with Jonah. Jonah wasn't running to, to serve a new God. Jonah was just disobeying what God wanted for him in his life. And maybe that's where you are. Maybe you're not running to serve other gods in terms of someone else that you pray to, but maybe you're running to serve other gods in terms of your engagement and your activity and your purpose in life. If you are like that, Jonah, running away from the hand of God on your life, from the purpose of God on your life, I challenge you today. I challenge you today. I say to you, surrender to God because he will pursue you. He will pursue you. And you will pay, but he's merciful. Jonah paid, but God is merciful. And God will restore. He will restore all that you have lost in the years that you have lost them. That what happened to Jonah. Because the text said after he prayed three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, God heard him, God had compassion on him, and God caused the whale to spit him out. God will cause the darkness to spit you out. He will cause the desperation and the tribulation and the affliction to spit you out so that you can be in alignment and rhythm and in sync with the will of God concerning you. I speak his power, his blessing, his peace, his salvation, his rescue, his restoration over you today. May the Kavash healing of God be over you, to bind you, 
the bandage to bandage you the wounds and everything you have suffered that you can return to almighty god and walk in the rhythm and the purpose of god for your life god bless you jesus is calling you today and if you've never accepted him as savior maybe you're not one running like jonah maybe you're one running from the conviction of the Spirit of God in your heart to come to Jesus as Lord and Savior. If maybe you are that person today, I want to say to you that softly and tenderly, Jesus is using even this medium right now to call you, to call you to him, to save you to the utmost he saves. And he wants to rescue you from the hands of the enemy, from the desperate swallowing hold, hold of hell. And he wants to get to you wherever you are. He wants to bring you back into the fold and he will pursue you as that one lost sheep. He will pursue you and his love for you is unconditional. Where can you run from the presence of God? If you make your bed in hell, even there, he will find you. So surrender to the will and the spirit and the power of Almighty God today. And I pray his peace and his power over you and your household. And above all things, that his salvation will rest in you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Peace. Peace. I pray that you will join me on Sunday on Zoom as we look at grief and loss. As we look at those people who are hurting from the losses they've had in their lives, from the grief, just from bereavement, whatever is the loss. We want to talk about that this Sunday. Invite somebody. Let them know we're on. I will put the Zoom link on Facebook as always. And join me. Let somebody know. Somebody you know who may be suffering. And let them join. Come in. It's free. It's free. And I want to say to you, if just maybe you can find healing in what we share together on Sundays, I would want you to be there. I wouldn't want you to miss that. And you don't have to be paying for it. For right now, it's free. Okay? So come on, join us on Sunday as we look at grief and loss. But as even as you ponder that, join me again next week, Wednesday, right here on Facebook Live at 4.30 Eastern Time. Where again, we look at the scriptures and reflect on the power of in the word of Almighty God, because he saves to the utmost. Thank you for making this your place today. Love and blessings. Shalom.